The coach drove on through a thick forest, where it lighted up the way like a torch, and dazzled the eyes of some robbers who could not bear to let it pass them untouched. "'It is gold! It is gold!' cried they, rushing forward and seizing the horses. Then they struck the little jockeys, the coachman, and the footman dead, and pulled little Gerda out of the carriage. <laughs> she is fat and pretty, and she has been fed with the kernels of nuts,' said the old robber woman, who had a long beard and eyebrows that hung over her eyes. "'She is as good as a little lamb. How nice she'll taste!' And as she said this, she drew forth a shining knife that glittered horribly. "'Oh!' screamed the old woman the same moment, for her own daughter, who held her back, had bitten her in the ear. She was a wild and naughty girl, and the mother called her an ugly thing, and had not time to kill Gerda. "'She shall play with me!' said the little robber girl. "'She shall give me her muff and her pretty dress, and sleep with me in my bed!' And then she bit her mother again, and made her spring in the air and jump about, and all the robbers laughed and said, "'See how she is dancing with her young cub!' "'I'll have a ride in the coach,' said the little robber girl, and she would have her own way. And she was so self-willed and obstinate. She and Gerda seated themselves in the coach and drove away over stumps and stones into the depths of the forest. The little robber girl was about the same size as Gerda, but stronger. She had broader shoulders and a darker skin. Her eyes were quite black, and she had a mournful look. She clasped little Gerda round the waist and said, "'We should not kill you as long as you don't make us vexed with you. I suppose you are a princess.' "'No,' said Gerda. And then she told her all of her history and how she was on, as she was of little Kay. The robber girl looked earnestly at her, nodded her head slightly, and said, huh, "'They shan't kill you, if I do get angry with you, for I'll do it for myself.' And then she wiped Gerda's eyes and stuck her own hands in the beautiful muff, which was so soft and warm. The coach stopped in the courtyard for a robber's castle, the walls of which were cracked from top to bottom. Ravens and crows flew in and out of the holes and crevices, while great bulldogs, either of which looked as if they could swallow a man, were jumping about. But they were not allowed to bark. In the large and smoky hall a bright fire was burning on the stone floor. There was no chimney, so the smoke went up to the ceiling and found a way out for itself. Soup was boiling in a large cauldron, and hares and rabbits were roasting on the spit. "'You shall sleep with me and all my little animals tonight,' said the robber girl. After they had something to eat and drink, she took Gerda to a corner of the hall, where some straw and carpets were laid down. Above them, on lace and perches, were more than a hundred pigeons, who all seemed to be asleep, although they moved slightly when the two little girls came near them. "'These all belong to me!' said the robber girl, and she seized the nearest to her, held it by the feet, and shook it till it flapped its wings. "'Tis it!' cried she, flapping in Gerda's face. "'There sit the wood pigeons,' continued she, pointing to a number of lace in a cage which had been fixed into the walls near one of the openings. Both rascals would fly away directly if they were not closely locked up, and here is my old sweetheart, Bah! and she dragged out a reindeer by the horn. He wore a bright copper ring around his neck and was tied up. We were obliged to hold him tight, too, once he would run away from us. I tickle his neck every evening with my sharp knife, which frightens him very much. And then the robber girl drew a long knife from a chink in the wall and let it slide gently over the reindeer's neck. The poor animal began to kick, and the little robber girl laughed and pulled down Gerda into the bed with her. "'Will you have the knife with you while you are asleep?' asked Gerda, looking at it in great fright. "'I would sleep with my knife with me,' said the robber girl. "'No one knows what may happen, but now tell me again all about little Kay and why you went out to the world.' Then Gerda repeated her story over again, while the wood pigeons in the cage over cooed, and the other pigeons slept. The little robber girl put one arm across Gerda's neck and held the knife in the other, and was soon fast asleep, snoring. But Gerda could not close her eyes at all. She knew not whether she was to live or die. 
The robbers sat round the fire, singing and drinking, and the old woman stumbled about. It was a terrible sight for a little girl to witness. Then the wood pigeon said, Hoo, hoo, we have seen little Kay. A white fowl carried his sledge and sat in the carriage of the Snow Queen, which drove through the wood while we were laying in our nest. She blew upon us, and all the young ones died except us two. Coo, coo. What are you saying up there? cried Greta. Where was the Snow Queen going? Do you know anything about it? She was most likely traveling to Lapland, where there's always snow and ice. Ask the reindeer that's fastened up there with a the rope. Yes, there's always snow and ice, said the reindeer. It is a glorious place. You can leap and run about it freely on the sparkling ice plains. The Snow Queen has her summer tent there, but her strong castle is at the North Pole and an island called Spitsbergen. Oh, Kay, little Kay, sighed Gerda. Lie still, said the robber girl, or I shall run my knife into your body. In the morning, Gerda told her all the wood pigeons had said, and the little robber girl looked quite serious and nodded her head and said, This is all talk. That is all talk. Do you know where Lapland is? She asked the reindeer. Who should know better than I do, said the animal, with his eyes sparkled. I was born and brought up there, and used to run about the snow-covered plains. Now listen. So the robber girl, all our men are gone away. Only mother is here, and here she will stay. But at noon she always drinks out a great bottle, and afterwards sleeps for a little while, and then I'll do something for you. And then she jumped out of bed, clasped her mother round the neck, and pulled her by the beard, crying. <laughs> My own little nanny goat, good morning. Then her mother flipped her nose till it was quite red, yet she did all with love. When the mother had drunk out the bottle and was gone to sleep, the little robber maiden went to the reindeer and said, I should like very much to tickle your neck a few times more with my knife, or it makes you look so funny, but never mind. I'll untie your cord and set you free, so you may run away to Lapland. But you must take good use of your legs and carry this little maiden to the castle of the Snow Queen, where her playfellow is. You have heard what she told me, for she spoke long enough, and you were listening. Then the reindeer jumped for joy, and the little robber girl lifted Gerda on his back, and had the forethought to tie her on, and even to give her own little cushion to sit on. Here are your fur boots for you, said she, for it would be very cold, but I must keep them up, so it's so pretty. However, you shall not be frozen for the want of it. Here are my mother's large warm mittens, that will reach up to your elbows. Let me put them on. Now, your hands look just like my mom's. But Gerda wept for joy. I don't like to see you fret, said the little robber girl. You ought to look quite happy now. And here are two loaves and a ham, so you need not starve. These were fastened on the reindeer, and then the little robber maiden opened the door, coaxed in all the great dogs, and then cut the string in which the reindeer was fastened with her sharp knife, and said, Now run, but mind you take good care of the little girl. And then Gerda stretched out her hand, the great mitten on it, towards the little robber girl, and said, Farewell! And away flew the reindeer over stumps and stones, through the great forest, over marshes and plains, as quickly as he could. The wolves howled, and the ravens screamed, while up in the sky quivered red lights like flames of fire. There are my old northern lights, said the reindeer. See how they flash! And he ran on day and night, still faster and faster, but the loaves and the ham were all eaten by the time they were reaching Lapland. <laughs>